Hi, everyone. Welcome to the PyTorch 2021 Hackathon. My name is Lin Bin. I'm working on the PyTorch mobile team at Facebook, focused on PyTorch adoption. Here is my colleague, Ivan. Hi, I'm Ivan. I work on PyTorch mobile team at Facebook, focused on Android and open source adoption. Today, I'm excited to tell you about PyTorch mobile on Android. And Ivan will give you some example of how it works to have a better idea how you can use it in the Hackathon. I'm going to start by talking about how to use PyTorch Android runtime. Then I will give you a quick overview of what's new and talk through the latest features like NAPI, mobile interpreter, Vulkan support, native application support, and Torch Vision library. Then we will end with a demo from Ivan. First, I will go over PyTorch mobile runtime. We start with the model trained in PyTorch. You can quantize the model for smaller size and better performance. Then you need to either trace or script the model to generate for script. There's a special API called Optimize for Mobile that can apply some typical optimizations on your model. It's recommended to run for better performance. After that, you will need to save the model to light interpreter format. And then add PyTorch Android dependency from Maven. Now you can run the model on Android. Now I have talked through Android, Android runtime. I'm going to share the latest features for PyTorch Mobile from the past year. If you participated last year's Hackathon and watched our mobile tutorials, you will notice these features are all new since then. The first big new feature to highlight is NNAPI. NNAPI provides access to powerful and efficient computational cores on many modern Android devices. Currently, PyTorch supports a limited range of op operators, but we will support more in the future. Next, we have Mobile Interpreter, a feature in beta. The Mobile Interpreter is a simplified interpreter that can execute Torch script with reduced binary size. Combined with Selective Build, it can significantly reduce the binary size of PyTorch runtime up to 75% for a typical application. The third new feature is native application support, which allows you to make an Android application that uses LibTorch C++ API from pre-built binaries. There's no need to build PyTorch Android manually. You just use the published artifacts on Maven Central. Now I have talked about Vulkan support which was released with PyTorch 1.7. Vulkan is the API and compute, it's a graphics and compute API for mobile GPUs on Android devices. But it, it can also be used on Linux, Mac, and Windows with supported hardware. Now you can run model inference on GPUs that support Vulkan. The latest feature I want to highlight today is Torch Vision Library. Torch Vision Library contains mask RCN ops for object detection and segmentation. Starting from 1.9, user can use Torch Vision library on Android and iOS apps. It can be added as a Gradle dependency for Android. That's all for the new features. Now, my colleague Ivan will give you a demo and show you some examples of PyTorch Mobile in action and give you ideas on how to get started with building your mobile app in the Hackathon. Welcome to the demo portion of today's video. My name is Ivan, and I will show you how to build an Android application on PyTorch that recognizes handwritten digits with a MNIST model using CPU, NNAPI, and Vulkan backends. First of all, to prepare, we need to prepare the models. To prepare the models for NNAPI and Vulkan backend, we have to build a desktop PyTorch with additional CMAIC options, use an NNAPI, and use Vulkan. To have all dependencies contained, I use Docker image. You can find this Docker file uh, in our PyTorch demo apps repository. It is based for the on Ubuntu Docker image and contains all dependencies to build PyTorch desktop with Vulkan. To build our PyTorch, I already have this container running and uh, to, to specify that we need Vulkan backend, we specify use Vulkan equals one, use an NAPI for an NAPI backend, and as additional parameter, we have to specify Vulkan SDK on the machine. This will start building the PyTorch 
the build can take some time. In future, we will include those options by default in pre-built binaries, and they will be available without manual build. The build can take some time depending on the on your machine, on the performance. But if you already built PyTorch before, like it shouldn't take a lot of time. Here we are. Our PyTorch installation is completed and we are ready to prepare the model. To prepare the models, we prepare the Python script where we include uh, all needed dependencies. We are creating the model based on uh, NIST model with two convolution layers and uh, two linear layers. And we creating it, putting it into evaluation mode. For preparation of the CPU model, we are calling optimize for mobile function and we are saving it for the mobile for the light interpreter and uh, we are saving as a NIST PTL file for the Vulkan backend it's a bit different like we are specifying the additional parameter backend equals Vulkan and we are saving for the mobile interpreter for an API the process different from previous two like we are creating example of the input tensor and we are tracing the model and calling specific function to prepare the model for an NAPI backend. And we also saving it for the light interpreter. Let's run our models preparation. Now we see that we have those models ready. What we will do next is to, we will build Android archive of PyTorch Android that we will include into our Android application. To do this, like we are returning back to PyTorch root folder, and we are using script build PyTorch Android. We are specifying that we need Vulkan backend inside and NNPI backend inside, and we are specifying ARM64 V8A ABI to build only one ABI and not four. Optionally, you can specify the list of operators that you want to include in this build. This option will decrease a binary size of your archive and it will be much smaller and it will contain only operators that you want to use like for your network. Now you can see that like Android archive is ready and we will copy it from Docker container to our AR folder, and we will copy our models to our assets folder. And we are ready to go to the Android Studio. In Android Studio, I have prepared application that contains uh, one activity and one custom view. Uh, this uh, view is responsible to collect all touch inputs, like what will be drawn on the input area, in build gradle we are including ARs, adding let dear dears ARs to repositories section and we are including it as implementation in gradle dependencies as pytorch android file and AAR extension we can see that it's uh, our android archive is in AAR folder and assets folder contains all models for our backends nist ptl is a cpu model NIST and NPI for NNPI backend and NIST Vulkan for our Vulkan GPU backend. In main activity, like we are loading separately each module, we are loading for CPU using light module loader from Org PyTorch package. For NNPI, we are loading it completely the same way. The only difference is inside the model. For Vulkan backend, we have to specify additional parameter device that Vulkan to specify that we want to convert any input to specific uh, our Vulkan device. 
what is uh, happening next that we are collecting inputs from from our input area where we have drawn like the digit we are preparing the input tensor the size of 28 by 28 and we are forward uh, calling forward of the our module and we are collecting the outputs which will be probability of our digits and we are taking the top three probabilities and showing top three digits now we are ready to run our model like on the device now we have everything to build android application and i will show how it runs like on the android phone thank you for watching the video today we hope it was helpful if you want to find more information about pytorch mobile visit pytorch.org mobile good luck in the hack zone <laughs>